everyone and welcome to the start of another vlog. So this vlog, I had initially had all these fun plans for this weekend, but the thing is, Chicago has been raining non-stop for the past two days, so like everything has been canceled. I have a lot of stuff going on on Sunday, which I'm excited about. That combined with the fact that I am trying to get my life together this weekend, and I'm gonna be organizing more, cleaning out more of things, and just basically getting everything set to donate. And then obviously this weekend I'm gonna be reading and just like hanging out with me and Matilda watching Bravo, I got more Cheetos, things are happening. But to start off the vlog, let's go through what I hope to read this weekend. So my reading plans literally could not be any more different from each other. So first and foremost, I wanna finish Save the Date by Morgan Matson. I am halfway through this book and I started this book a day ago, two days ago. I'm flying through it. It is so entertaining. It is so funny. I haven't read a contemporary like this, I feel like, in so long. And I am just having such a great time reading this. Every time I pick it up, I like zoom through 80 pages like it's absolutely nothing. It feels incredible to read and I'm really liking it. And then the next book on my list is the ultimate book. I know a lot of people were hoping I'd film a reading vlog and I'm sure this book will be featured in many reading vlogs, but I'm gonna start A Way of Kings this weekend. This will be, after I finish this, this is my fifth book of the month. This will be the sixth book of the month. And obviously I don't anticipate finishing this, but I'm hoping to get through a chunk of this novel this weekend and finish this entirely. Only 200 pages left of this book, so that should be easy breezy. Probably can read another 150 pages tonight and be essentially done. And time to give my attention to this bad boy. What a behemoth. <laughs> um, but yeah, so those are my reading plans for the weekend. Right now, I just got home from work and I put on MasterChef kids which is honestly like the most adorable show i just cry every time they cry it's a whole thing um but i also picked up on the way home from work pizza rolls rose and cheetos so you know it's just kind of like a summer holiday in kind of night it's 60 degrees in chicago raining and i'm eating pizza rolls so they're completed but they're for me. And then I'm catching up on Real Housewives of New York, you know, constantly prepping for my move and my new friends. So I'll let you guys know how it goes. I have moved on to starting to watch adorable rom coms while consuming all of the Cheetos. I'm becoming a stereotype, but I'm very excited to watch this. It looks cute. And I'm in the mood for cute. I think Save the Date has really inspired me to just to consume all adorable media. That combined with To All the Boys I Loved Before trailer launching today, which I'm so hyped for. I'm like preparing myself with this movie. Also, shout out to Netflix for making rom-coms. Is it just me or has there been like a complete lack of rom-coms to consume recently? I just feel like there's way less than there used to be out both in the movies, like movie theaters and all that sort of thing. So I feel like they're kind of becoming popular again and I'm really excited about it. Hey guys, it's a bit later. I'm now in my bedroom. Um, So update on the movie, The Kissing Booth. So I started watching it. I was so excited because I love rom-coms. I love a good cheesy love story or not a cheesy love story. But I gave that movie about halfway through and believe me, I wanted to love it. I, I wanted to. The premise sounded like something I would be interested in, but I couldn't finish it. I, I found elements of the story to be too like jarring and too problematic, to be completely honest, to be comfortable with watching it. I mean, the relationship dynamics were really uh, misogynistic and kind of very... Uh, manipulative and controlling and then there's like elements of sexual assault that I felt like was just like breezed over I mean everyone was in a constant state of catcalling and I was I don't know the movie made me a little uncomfortable and I'm a little disappointed that it wasn't as cute or as like modern as I wanted it to be but Alas, I've decided to come into the bedroom and read Save the Day by Morgan Madsen, which is making me super happy and it's adorable and cute and, you know, isn't disappointing me like that movie did. And it will, I feel like we'll fit the bill, you know what I mean? And I, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I'm flying through this. Uh, I'm not sure if I've actually talked about what this book is about. This is a book about a big family called the Grant family and there's a lot of kids. Um, 
And we follow our main character who's the youngest in the family and she is really excited because this upcoming weekend is her sister's wedding which means everyone in her family is in town, all of her siblings, which hasn't been the case for a while. And she's put a lot of expectation on this weekend to be the best weekend ever with her family and she's definitely kind of using it as an excuse to not really face some of her stresses and worries like where she's going to college and things like that. So far it is so funny and the dialogue is fantastic. It feels like a rom-com, it feels like a movie but in a book. What I also find really interesting is the condensed time period. There are a few flashbacks here and there but for the most part, at least for the first half of the book, everything has taken place over the span of a few days which is cool and um, again I think makes a great movie format but I am really liking it. The dialogue is fantastic, the family dynamics are very interesting, complex, and I am really, really enjoying it. So I'm gonna read some more. So talk to you later. Hello everyone. It's late. Much later than I thought I would be awake right now, but I wanted to check in and say I finished Save the Date. <laughs> I read the last 200 plus pages of this book in one sitting, and I'm a little too tired to talk about it in depth right now, but to leave you on this note, I loved it a lot. It was a really, really good story, and I think Morgan Matson like did so many great things with the characters, and I just loved it. But now I need to go to sleep. Why well, need to brush my teeth, wash my face, then go to sleep? It's the next morning. I have coffee. I have World Cup. It's a little bit slow over in this household. Hey, Millie. Well, for me, clearly, not Matilda. Um, so I'm gonna drink this coffee. I'm gonna get ready, and I need to film, and then I'll catch you guys up on all of my reading, but first I need to consume some caffeine. The aftermath of filming is always just a mess for me to clean up. At least I made my bed though, that's a positive. Alrighty guys, I'm in the midst of uploading my video. Where's my desk? There it is. And uh, the Germany soccer game is at halftime, so I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to do a quick haul for you guys. So hold on, let me get you situated. Hi everyone, you're up on your book tripod because exciting, I'm about to do a haul. That's right, I have gotten some exciting new things from ThreadUp.com. As you guys know, I work with ThreadUp regularly because they're an amazing online consignment store that basically, which allows me to get a bunch of my favorite items from all of my favorite stores at incredibly discounted prices because it is consignment. So without further ado, I'm gonna show you some of the really, really cute things I picked up for summer. Per usual, everything always comes so nicely packaged. I got some really exciting stuff this time. So many stripes, but what's new? So the first thing I see on top is incredibly exciting. It is this navy and white striped Everlane sweater. Yes, people, I found an Everlane sweater for on sale. Everlane things literally never go on sale. They're incredibly high quality. This is their lightweight, 100% cotton sweater, and I've been dying for it for so long, and to find it for such a good deal, I literally couldn't handle it. And the estimated original price for this amazing sweater was $89 and I got it for $42.99 so I'd say that's a pretty good deal. The next two things I got are just variations of the same thing but hear me out. I love them so it's fine. And Other Stories is one of my favorite stores and I particularly love their striped shirts. I bought one in Paris last summer and I found two two of them on thread up and I literally squealed. I was so excited. The first one I got is so cute. It's a long sleeve blue and white Breton stripe top, but what makes it so fun is this green collar detail. And the estimated original price for this top was $83 and I got it for $19.99, which, ugh, so good. I can't believe I had this. So excited to wear this all the time. In fact, I was so excited to have it that I decided to get it in another color. <laughs> this is another and other stories long sleeve striped t-shirt. This time a more classic red and white stripe with a red collar. And just like the other stripe long sleeve and other stories top, this has an estimated price of $83 and I got it for $19.99. Just call me Where's Waldo. I love it. The next item I picked up is a silk top 
from my favorite store, Madewell. And I just thought this was so beautiful and perfect for summer. It has this really delicate floral pattern that almost has like a paisley element to it. It's a nice boxy fit, which I think is really flattering to tuck in with jeans. And I got this for such an amazing price. This has an estimated original price of $150, and I got it for $32.99. And the last item I got is another fantastic basic. And this is also from And Other Stories, which has fast become one of my more favorite stores um, and it's expensive so I'm always happy to find really amazing pieces for more affordable prices but this is a long sleeve black sheer chiffon blouse it's dotted um, which is really really great and the buttons I think are so interesting it's like they're kind of like clustered together which I just feel like gives it a more interesting detail for such a basic um, classic top and for my last piece this blouse has an estimated original price of $167 and I picked it up for $30.99 I mean such a great price for such a classic top that I'll have in my wardrobe for years to come so that is everything I got in my thread up haul per usual I have a discount code it is 25% off your first order and I have it down in the description bar as well as a link to the site if you're interested Yay, I always love getting new clothes, but this is also inspiring me to get my life together and continue to clean out my closet to make space for new things. In with the new, out with the old. Between editing and all of that, I was roasting some potatoes and Brussels sprouts for lunch. The Brussels sprouts might be a little too uh, roasted, but I'll eat them anyway. I'm so hungry. This is what you make when you literally have two things in your fridge. Luckily, they go nicely together, so yum. Hi guys, I was sitting on the couch, um, absolutely shook from that Germany Sweden game. I mean, my God, talk about a game, right Millie? We were just like, wow. Um, but I was sitting here and I realized I never actually checked in to tell you guys how I felt and what I read last night. I've just been running around all day. Um, it's like 3 p.m., like filming, editing, watching soccer it's been a little chaotic right here but i only have to run to the grocery store it's like my last thing i need to do today and then i can actually sit and read which i'm really pumped about but i wanted to tell you guys what i ended up reading yesterday starting with save the date so i ended up reading um 200 pages of this last night and i actually also read 75 pages of this book at lunch yesterday so all in all i read almost 300 pages of this book or three-fourths of this book yesterday. It was so good. I flew through it. It was really, 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 really funny. Um, and I thought it like, and as I mentioned kind of last night, I thought the time frame of the novel was really interesting. It only taking place over three days. And also I felt like the author was able to keep it light and fun, but also kind of dive into dive into some complex family dynamics, which I really liked. I don't know, I really, really enjoyed this book and it makes me just realize I need to get better about reading other contemporary novels and especially other Morgan Matson books as I think I've only read two now. This is my second one. Um, yeah, I flew through this book. It was so fun and I'm really glad I read it. And then last night I picked up, whoo, the Way of Kings. I have read 23 pages of this book as of last night um, before I needed to go to sleep. So far, so good. I have no idea what's going on. I mean, I'm 23 pages into this book, so I've read like two chapters. But I'm hoping to read more of this today and tell you more of my thoughts as I start to inch my way along in this book. How long is this book? Oh, I think it's just under if not exactly a thousand pages it's actually less pages than i thought i thought it was like 1300 so hmm, okay 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 i think i can handle this so yeah so my plan for today is to read more tonight i have um to run to the store to pick up some food to make for dinner to eat over the next couple days the past two days have been like at home days tomorrow sunday of all days i'm actually pretty busy i have the event i'm hosting which i'm super excited for and then i'm grabbing dinner with some friends which i'll bring you along for in a really cool west loop or wicker park um restaurant in chicago which i'm really excited about so i've really spent today like trying to just get my life together because i'm not really going to be home much tomorrow i'm going to be like out and about uh so i'm almost successfully done that i still want to clean out my closet which i'm going to do later tonight and i want to read so those are so the three things on the docket for today are go to the grocery store read clean out my closet so <laughs> woo okay I really need to go to the grocery store now. That Germany game though, 
That was wild. Back from the grocery store and don't worry, I only bought priority things like peonies and ice cream. Haha! -ha. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, today has been a lot more chaotic than I thought it would be. I feel like I've just been running around the apartment, outside, scrambling, um, but I'm finally kind of coming to a finishing point. And the thing I want to do now is clean out my closet and my dresser and my sweaters, which are under my bed, which is something I've been kind of excited about doing. So I'm going to set you up over here and we're going to do multiple rounds <laughs> and I'm going to have multiple sources of entertainment. Oh, I love Phone. I'm going to plug my phone in to this little guy. Normally we use this to listen to our record player, but I really want to listen to the Mayday Parade new album, which I'm thinking about getting on vinyl because Clay and I both really like it. It's hard to do this one-handed. And I have been loving it a lot. Let's see. I'm going to go to the first song. I'm like navigating my phone through the viewfinder of this vlog camera and it's hard. Okay. Let's get started. All right, I paused the music to show you guys my t-shirt collection. I know, I have a problem. There's nothing I love more than t-shirts, but I need to obviously get rid of a lot of these. I'm gonna try to cut it in half, Maybe, hopefully. Okay, I'll set you up somewhere. Let's get started. one of the tasks where I do it once and then I do it twice like I did with my dresses which I got a lot more stuff out of my closet as well it's all in that pile which I'm happy with so I feel like with my t-shirts it might have to be like a couple round thing like I ultimately got rid of like a decent amount like there's all these like this is a lot you know like it's a lot of t-shirts but then like I still have some of that mountain of t-shirts but I love them. I love t-shirts. I think I can fit them all in one drawer though. So I think that's progress. And like, that's a lot. Small victories, guys, small victories. <laughs> Two more trash bags of clothes down. I was gonna tackle my sweaters today, but I'm gonna be honest, it's 6.30, I'm tired. And sweaters is gonna be like a whole it's gonna be like hours. I have so many and I love sweaters so much, but I wanted to show you. This is my little like, Reagan's cleaning out of her apartment pile. Two more big bags full of clothes to donate. Super happy about that. And you know, it's progress. It's progress. I do my sweaters, I'm still doing my bookshelf. I'm just trying to like get rid of things that I don't need and people out there might need more than me to donate to places that could use them before I go. So. That's that, happy with that. And I have so <laughs> Miller, are you tuckered out too? Are you just like, wow, that was exhausting. She had so many t-shirts, isn't that right, Matilda? So I think I'm going to watch some Netflix and then start dinner. I'm gonna make like a taco soup tonight, which is like, kind of like chili, but not really. It's like similar, but different, you know? They're in the same family. I feel good about that. I feel very productive. I still feel like I have so much more to go though. You know where you're like, I. <laughs> it's like when you like get over a hill you're like I did it I got over the hill and then you see the mountain still ahead of you and you're like oh but I just gotta take it one hill at a time and I did it so bummer I mean not bummer yay gonna take a queer eye break because I have yet to see season two yet don't tell Clay I'm watching without him it's our secret okay I also realized I should probably start dinner because it's 6 30 and this takes like an hour to cook it's just full of canned things you know and everything this is like the easiest recipe of all time you just like brown a bunch of stuff and then you dump a bunch of stuff in here with some seasonings and let it cook for like an hour it's what i make when i'm like craving something that's not it's what i make when i'm craving something spicy and very reheatable so i'm probably gonna eat this for dinner for the next like mm, six days 
might have needed to use a larger pan. Cutting it a little close here. Um, hopefully this will reduce down a bit. So, uh, yeah, this is basically what it is. It's like a, it's like a variant of a chili with more things in it. All right, it's done. And you know, don't mind me, I've just been waiting for this to cook and crying to Queer Eye. It's fine, I'm fine, everything's fine. I'm not fine. I said I was only gonna watch one episode, but now I'm on episode three and I've cried so much. It's just so heartwarming and inspiring. I just can't even deal, and then Anthony is such a cutie. It's just a lot to handle all at once. I mean, look at him in his striped shirt. I just cannot. I cannot. Hi, everyone. It's a bit later. I've come into the bedroom. Obviously, this is not the living room. Um, and Clay and I are going to watch some Netflix for a little bit. He has plans tonight, and I'm going to read later. So we're only going to watch a few episodes. But I figured I would take this time to talk about the show we're watching. The new show is Brooklyn Nine-Nine, and it's so freaking good. I don't necessarily think this will be the only show we'll watch, but we wanted to watch something a little lighter after Staircase. We both have been meaning to watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine. The only crappy thing about it is, is that it's amazing and it's all I want to watch, but now I'm handcuffed to only be able to watch it with Clay. But, so we're going to watch a few episodes now, wild Saturday night. God, I just spent three hours crying to Queer Eye, so I really could use some smiles. <laughs> Though I suppose those weren't like sad tears, they were really happy tears. Everyone is just like, it's just so sweet. Um, but yeah, so that's how I'm gonna spend my Saturday night and then I'm going to listen to some music and read some more of The Way of Kings. I've definitely read a lot less than I had initially planned, but I kind of got on a roll with uh, cleaning and cleaning out my closet and then Queer Eye really captured a lot of my attention and then I lost track of time, but the weekend's still young. I've still read 300 pages on Friday, which I feel like will carry me through. Um, and I'll definitely do some reading tonight, so it's not like the night is completely gone. I feel like my camera focus has been so bad recently. But yeah, so I'm gonna watch some Brooklyn Nine-Nine with Matilda. Hey, Millie! It's a horrible listener. And so it begins. Hey, Charles. Season one, episode Would five. For We're early on in this journey. <laughs> I got myself some ice cream. Third episode of Brooklyn Nine-Nine in. I have a feeling I'm gonna be here for a while. <laughs> Clay canceled his plans to watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine. That means my reading plans have been delayed a little further, but I'm going to pick it up soon, I promise. Alrighty guys, I'm gonna start reading and stop watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I love Brooklyn Nine-Nine, but I have a feeling I'm gonna love this book too. Time to get started. Um, this is where I'm at. I've made some really fantastic progress, as you can see. You know, really deep in the story right now. Okay, time to read for real. Hello, good morning everyone. I just woke up and clearly looked like it. I ran out and got some coffee, which I'll show in a second. But Matilda and I here are gonna drink this coffee, watch some soccer, and then I have to be ready to go for my meetup today, which I'm so excited about. I'm a little nervous. I'm always a little nervous before a meetup, just like in case no one comes. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm really, really excited. Oh my gosh, Matilda. But yeah, that's what I'm gonna be doing for three hours today. And then I'm getting dinner with a friend. So I'm kind of just like taking 30 minutes to myself, and then I'm gonna get ready and go, 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 go. And then I'll come back here tonight and I'm sure Clay and I will watch from Brooklyn Nine-Nine and then I'll read more. But in terms of what I read last night, I read another 40 pages of The Way of Kings, which to me is a lot because I read for like an hour. <laughs> the Way of Kings is a book that's huge. The font is small and the pages are big. So, and I like extra paying attention. I'm reading like super carefully just because I'm trying to kind of get situated in the world because there's a lot going on already. And I just trying to like make sure I'm like, okay, characters, like trying to understand the magic system. So it takes me a little bit longer to read, but I'm about 60 pages in now liking it. Um, I'm definitely beginning to kind of understand more of what's going on now, which is good. Um, so far, so good. But again, like 60 pages is nothing in this book that I couldn't even begin to tell you what the main plot or storyline is about. I've met two characters right now. Um, about to meet a third one, I'm pretty sure. So 
I, this is a book that it, it's gonna unwind over a long period of time and I'm really excited for it. I'm here for it. I know it's gonna be amazing. So it's just a matter of patience and perseverance. And I also feel like I might start another Morgan Matson book tonight because I loved Save the Date. Like I flew through that book and I just keep thinking about it. I keep thinking about the characters and how cute it was and how happy it made me feel. So I feel like I might pick up another another Morgan Matson book Morgan Matson book in uh, to read alongside A Way of Kings. Uh, they definitely contrast each other greatly. <laughs> but yeah, I think that is my plan. But I'm gonna drink my coffee now and eat my croissant. There are few things in this world I love more than croissants. Croissants are like top five favorite food. Seriously. Up there with movie theater popcorn, Flaming Hot Cheetos, croissants. Just a lot of carbs basically. So I'm gonna eat that now, goodbye. Hi everyone, I wanted to do a quick OOTD before I left as I'm about to leave. Um, I'm wearing this really cute, a little creased <laughs> dress from Madewell. I love it. I'm wearing a little denim jacket over it. My sun earrings, which I feel like I wear every day. Contacts, which is a rare, rare thing in this world. And then my little Royale boots, which I honestly also wear like every day. So this is what I'm wearing. Also quick shout out to the peonies I bought yesterday that are absolutely thriving. I've, I've had two big blooms and almost two more. Look at these, these are about to pop any second. This is so exciting. There is a sign with my name on it. And I picked this stuff out. Oi. Okay. So exciting. <laughs> Meetup is over and I need paper towels. So, here we are, CVS. Getting paper towels, I live a glamorous life. Alrighty, I'm back home with my paper towels. <laughs> um, and I'm only here for like 45 minutes and I'm gonna go meet my friends for an early dinner, but I'm so hungry that I got myself a big old bowl of strawberries to eat because I need some sugar. I just wanted to also just give a really big shout out to everyone who came to the Madewell event today. It was so lovely meeting you guys. I always love just meeting people that watch my videos or, or follow me on Instagram and talk about books and everything and learn more about you guys. Anyway, it was just so much fun to talk to you today. I had such a lovely time and I'm really, really glad it, some of you were able to come and it just means so much. I really wanted to skip a special shout out. I had a lot of fun, so yay. Had a day. And my peonies, guys, are just killing it over there. We're, look at them go. Oh, finally in bed and finally reading more Way of Kings. I want to read 60 pages right now, shower, watch some Brooklyn Nine-Nine with Clay, and then try to read a bit more tonight. My goal is to get to like 150 before the weekend's out which to me is good this book is like kind of, this book is dense this isn't like a let me fly through the way of kings you know what i mean so i think getting to about here in the in the book like look how far a 150 pages looks it looks like nothing but anyway that this is my goal this is my goal oh hi millie oh she's leaving where are you gonna sit where are you gonna go where are you gonna sit she's back anyway let's get started hello everyone a quick check in i have just surpassed 100 pages of a way of kings and i'm fine i'm like getting into the story um i've been into the story since the beginning but the first like i'd say like 40 pages are not necessarily disorienting but i mean this world is huge so when you first get and when you first start this book you're almost like i was hanging on to every word just kind of trying to figure out who and what and where and how and why everything was kind of happening. But for the past like 50 or 60 pages, I've been reading from switching between two characters' perspectives and through them, I'm finally beginning to feel oriented. Um, obviously, I still have a lot of questions, which I'm sure Brandon Sanderson will continue to answer throughout the story about the magic, but I'm beginning to kind of understand at least who are the characters' perspectives are and a bit about the magic system. I obviously have a lot of questions left, um, but I'm kind of getting to the point where I am comfortable in the story and I'm excited to kind of see how everything unravels. Um, I mean, this book, I'm sure, there's so many books. This book series is gonna be absolutely behemoth. I can't even like fathom how complex this plot is gonna be. But for now, the two characters I'm reading from I really enjoy and there's elements of the story I find to be very interesting. I'm still learning about the magic system, but at this point, 100 pages in, it almost, at least one of the characters kind of describes the magic as almost like alchemy, like it almost feels a little bit kind of like alchemy, like trans 
transfiguration kind of thing. I could be wrong, but um, it's very interesting and I really love the two perspectives I'm reading from now. I'm sure, I mean, there's there's been a few other perspectives near the beginning of the novel, but I feel like I'm reading from the two current main characters, which is always good. But yeah, I'm gonna read some more and I'll check in later. I'm gonna take a quick shower and then I'm gonna come back and read some more and then watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine with Clay. But I'm gonna try to read 50 more pages tonight. I do read this book much slower than like, for example, Save the Date. I literally felt like I read 100 pages of that an hour, maybe even more. I've been reading for an hour and I read 50 pages of this book. But I'm reading super carefully. I feel like I'm hanging on to every word, like reading into everything, making sure I understand. And also just I'm really enjoying the story. And to be fair, the words on these pages are like, you know, this is not, this is not, um. There's not a lot, these margins are not small and these pages are also not small. But this is, look at this, look at this beast of a book. Time for Clay and I's Brooklyn Nine-Nine date. I love Brooklyn Nine-Nine, guys. I love it so much. It's so funny. Alrighty, back to reading. Right, Matilda? What are you reading? What are you reading right now? What's boring? Can't even keep your eyes open. Hmm. Two stars? Okay. Hi everyone! It's the customary end um, to the vlog the next day and I wanted to quickly go over everything I read this past weekend. I'm also super happy to report I got so into The Way of Kings last night. I ended up reading over 100 pages, like maybe even 150 pages. Um, and I stayed up really, really late. like way later than I should have going into a work day, like mm, around 1 a.m. late. And I'm completely invested in this story now. I'm starting to really begin to get to grips with the world, with all the characters, like know what's going on. And I'm very invested in a character in the story, Kaladin. And I just want to know what's going on. And I, ended up re and I ended up reading to page 215. But anyway, before I go too into that, let's go over everything I read. So first and foremost, I completed Save the Date by Morgan Matson on Friday. I read all, all in all 300 pages of this book on Friday, some at lunch um, during my work day and the rest in the evening. And this book completely took me by surprise. I was anticipating liking it, but I flew through the story. It was hilarious, it was relatable, the narrative style was just fantastic. The comedy also had a lot of like action to it in the way that like there was always something going on in the story. It wasn't just like about boys, it wasn't just about this. There's like so many dynamic elements to the story that made it entertaining and I really enjoyed the shortened time span in which this book took place and it's just absolutely hilarious. I loved it. Um, I ended up giving it probably like a 4.5 out of 5 stars. It makes me want to read more Morgan Matson. And then after I picked that up, I started this tome, The Way of Kings, and it took me a little bit to get into, not gonna lie. It's almost a little disorienting. I also think shifting genres so intensely. I mean, going from like a rom-com contemporary to like epic fantasy, I was a little like thrown off at first. And it took me about 40 pages to kind of get oriented in the story a bit. But since that time, this book has just progressively gotten better and better and I've become so invested in the story and I'm obsessed with it. I can't stop thinking about it. Again, I still am having a hard time to describe the plot. It's more like a lot. There's a lot going on. There's like a lot of kingdoms, a lot of different threads. A, I would say from what I can gather, at least so far, there are like two main storyline perspectives. Shalem, Sh Shalem, Shalom, and Kaladin. Uh, both are attempting to do very different things and I'm not really sure the outcome of either and if they're ever going to get intertwined. Shalom is a lower noble woman and she's looking to basically get to be the apprentice of a really famous female scholar. Um, this woman is like really powerful and a princess and esteemed and she's trying to like become her clerk uh, as a way to help like save her family from some like debts and things to kind of like save the day. And then we also follow Kaladin who is a soldier who sold as a slave and that's and he's basically just trying to survive and that's kind of where I'm at with both of these characters. I'm sure there's so much more to their story, so much to find out and I can't wait to get there and I would imagine, I mean this is called The Way of Kings, so politics plays a heavy hand in this I'm sure and I'm beginning to kind of see the inklings of that but like I've only read 215 pages of this book. There's no way I could tell you exactly what is going on. This is a 13 book series so there's a lot still to happen but all in all, Absolutely in love with what I've read so far. 
Uh, love Save the Date, loving the Way of Kings so far. I read a total of about 515 pages, though I would say 215 pages of the Way of Kings is like, is like, <laughs> for me at the pace I'm reading Way of Kings would be like 500 pages of any other book. Um, but yeah, that is everything I read this weekend. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys soon with another reading vlog soon. Goodbye.